Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to video five in the Django React Redux series. Now we're going to start to get into authentication because right now uh, we can add leads, we can list them, we can delete them, update them without any login or any authentication whatsoever. So obviously that's that's not what we want in a production application. So I want to be able to authenticate and we shouldn't we shouldn't be able to get these leads or add them or do anything without authenticating with a token. So we're going to have to go back to the back end to implement this kind of thing. So let's go to in our lead manager. We want to go to leads. Okay, we want to go to our leads app and then models.py and we want to bring in the user model which comes default with Django. So we're going to say from Django dot contrib dot auth dot models we want to bring in or import user. Okay, so we're bringing in the user model and then I'm going to add another field to the lead of owner because we want to be able to basically track the leads per owner and we want each owner or user to see only their own leads. So I'm going to say equals models and then we want this to be a foreign key for the user table or the user model. So we're going to pass in here the user model. We also want to add the related name, which is going to be leads. And then we can decide what we want to do if a user is deleted and we just want we, we want to delete all of the users leads as well. So let's say on delete and we're going to set that to models dot cascade. Okay. And then I'm also going to set null to true, meaning that it will allow null values. The reason for that is because we already have some stuff in the database and there's no owner and I don't want to get an error. So we're just going to allow null to be true for now. All right. So let's save this. Now, just doing this obviously doesn't do anything. We need to create a new migration. So I'm going to open up my terminal. This is my Webpack uh, server. This is my Django server. So I'm going to just stop the Django server. And let's see. I'm just going to CD into lead manager. And we want to use manage.py for this. So let's go ahead and do Python manage dot pi and let's do uh, let's see we want to do make migrations. All right. So what happened here is it created a file called 0002 lead owner dot pi and we want to run this migration. So let's say Python manage dot pi migrate. Okay, so now it applied the migration and now we should have an owner field. If we go back to our application, well actually we have to run our server, so let's say python manage.py run server and reload, it should still work and everything should should be the same. Um now I want to make it so that we can't fetch these leads or add them or anything unless we're authenticated. So to do that, we have to go to our API. And what we did before is we just set permissions to allow any. We want to change that. Now for let's see. Instead of just setting this query set parameter here or this this query set uh, property, we're actually going to overwrite the get query set method because we only want to ret return the leads of the authenticated user. So we're going to get rid of that and I'm actually going to go under the permissions here. And let's say define get uh, query set. This takes in self as a parameter and then we want to return self dot request dot user dot leads dot all. So it's going to get only the leads of that user. All right. Now, as far as permissions go, we're going to go ahead and change this from permissions dot allow any to permissions dot is authenticated. 
All right. And then let's see. We also want to add down here another method. Let's actually move the serializer class up here like that. So we have all our methods down here. So we also want to do uh, define perform underscore create. And this is going to take in self and it's also going to take in the serializer. Which we have. Um, yeah, it takes in self serializer as a parameter. Um, and basically what this does is it 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 allows us to save the lead owner when we create the lead. So let's say serializer dot save and then we want to pass in owner and we want to set the owner to self dot request dot user. All right, so that should be good for the view set. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just save this and let's reload. And now notice that we're not seeing any leads down here. And if I open up my terminal and go to the console, you can see we get a 403 forbidden error. Now, what I'd like to do is is have the errors get added to our state. So let's actually head into front end and go to actions lead JS. And right here, I want to dispatch the get errors action to the reducer. So just like we did down here when we add a lead in the catch right here, um, we want to be able to do that. Now, instead of just doing this for every error that we want to send down, let's actually create a, a separate function that deals with this so we can just dispatch that function or that action. And I think that a good place to put it would be in the messages, uh, the messages action. Whoops, that's a reducer. No, nope, that's the action. So inside here, this uh, actions messages JS, let's go ahead and create an action to return errors. So we'll say export const return errors. And it's going to take in the message and the status. Okay, and then all we want to do is return get uh, I'm sorry, we want to return the type of get errors. Okay, so this will dispatch to the uh, to the reducer get errors and then for the payload. Instead of just creating an errors object and, and doing all that code, I'm just going to simply pass in an object here with the message and the status. Okay, so let's save this and let's go to leads and we'll bring this in. So we're already bringing in create message. Let's also bring in return errors. And that way we don't even need to bring in get errors here. And let's go down to the add lead. And inside of our catch, instead of doing this, let's just uh, let's see, we'll get rid of this whole what is this end right here. So we'll get rid of this whole thing and let's just do a dispatch to return errors. And remember, it takes in a message and a status. So we're going to take the error dot response dot data that gives us the message from the server and then we'll pass in the error dot response dot status from the server. OK, so we'll take that dispatch. Let's see. Which ends right here. So I'm going to just grab this and we'll do the same thing for the get lead. OK, so get leads instead of just console logging, we'll go ahead and paste in that. So let's see if that works. We'll save and let's reload. And now if we go to our Redux tools, we should see it in the state. So we'll go here and let's make this a bit bigger. If we look in errors and you can see status 403 and message is authentication credentials are not provided. All right. And if we went to postman and made our get request, 
we get that same message authentication credentials were not provided. All right, so we're now protecting this. And even if we tried to add here, if we look in our errors, we get a same thing 403 authentication credentials not provided. Good. And it's still going to just log this here. Um, now we need a way to authenticate. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a registration API so we can register a user. And then once we register a user, we'll be we'll create a login API. Once we do that, if we log in, we'll get a token. Okay, when we get that token, we can send that along with the headers or in the headers to to either add a lead or fetch the leads or, or anything that require requires authentication. All right. So we're going to do a lot of the testing with that with Postman before we implement it into our front end react app. So I'm just going to minimize the front end app here and we're going to be using something called uh, Django rest Knox, which we already installed, I believe. Let me just double check. Yep. So in our pip file, we have Django rest Knox. Now we have to add that to our settings. So let's go to lead manager settings and um, let's see. We want to add this right here. So let's say Knox. And then we're also going to add rest underscore framework. Okay, so we want to set this. We just want to set an option for authentication classes. We're going to say default underscore authentication underscore classes. And we just want to basically let the system know we're using Knox authentication token authentication. So we want to set this to Knox dot auth dot token authentication. All right, so we'll save that and let's make sure we have no errors in our server. Uh, now, in order for this to happen, we need to actually run a migration. As you can see, we have six unapplied migrations. So let's actually let's stop the server. Okay, the Django server and we're going to use Python dot manage to migrate. So Python, I mean, manage dot pi manage dot pi and we want to migrate. Okay, so this applied whatever we need to the database, which is these, you know, auth tokens expires auth token key and so on. All right, so we can run the server again with our manage dot pi run server. And now what we need to do is start thinking about creating our serializers for creating a user and logging in. Now we could do this in the leads app, but I don't think that makes very much sense. So I want to create a brand new app to do that and I'm going to call it accounts. So let's go ahead and let's run Python manage dot pi start app and we'll call this accounts. Okay, and that'll create an accounts folder. As you can see right here now, I'm just going to run the server again. And since we added since we created a new app called accounts, we need to go to a lead manager settings dot pi and add that as an app. So let's add accounts. Okay, we'll save that. And inside accounts now we want to create a serializer file. So let's say new file serializers dot pi. And it's the same workflow that we did with the leads. Really, it's just more in depth because we have more to do registering, logging in, um, checking a user, logging out, stuff like that. So we're going to focus on registration first. I want to get at least I want to be able to register a user using Postman before we move on to anything else. So in the serializers file, we're going to bring in from the rest framework. We want to import serializers. And then from Django dot contrib dot auth dot models, 
we want to import the user model. Okay, Django already has a user model and already has all that authentication stuff in place. Um, we're just using Knox for tokens. Um, so we also want to bring in something called authenticate. So we'll say from Django dot contrib contrib dot auth. We want to import authenticate. All right. Now we're going to create a user serializer. So I'm just going to put some comments in here just so you know what we're going to do. We're going to have that. We're going to have a register serializer and we're going to have a login serializer. All right. So the user serializer is, is going to be pretty simple and it's going to be very it's actually very similar to the lead serializer that we created. So we're going to say class user serializer and we're going to pass in serializers dot model serializer. We're going to define class meta just like we did in the leads and define the model, which is going to be the user model and the fields. Which are going to be ID. Username. And email. All right. And then for the register, let's say class. And we'll call this register serializer. And let's pass in the same thing serializers dot model serializer. And we're going to create a class of meta set the model to user fields. Oops fields. We're going to set to let's set to the same same ones we have up here, except we want to also include the password. Oh, want quotes around that because when we create a user, we obviously we need to enter a password and then we need a couple extra. If we need any extra arguments, we can add this extra underscore quarks K W A R G S. And we just want to make sure the password is right only. So let's say password. And we're going to set that to. Right underscore only, which is going to be set to true. Okay, um, and then let's create a method here. So on the same level as the class, we're going to say def create. Okay, this is going to take in. It's going to take in self and then validated underscore data. All right, we want to be able to validate the username, password, email. Um, so we're going to say user equals. And when I say validate, I just mean make sure it's the right type of data. Following following the, the structure of a user model, which we didn't create, that's included with um, with Django. So we're going to say user objects and then we want to create user create underscore user. And we want to pass in the validated data. And then each field, so username and then we'll put a comma here and let's say validated data. And then email. Validated data and password and it should take care of the hashing of the password and stuff for us. All right. So the last thing we want to do here in this this method is just return the user. All right. So we'll create create the user return it um, and that should be all set. So let's save this. And now we need to create an API file just like we did with the leads. So in accounts, let's create a file called API dot And in this file, we're going to let's say from rest framework, we're going to import something called generics 
and we're going to bring in permissions, which we're not going to use just yet, but we will be. Uh, and then we also we need to send a response from this API. So we want to bring in from rest framework dot response. We want to import response. Okay, and then for tokens, we're using Knox. So we're going to say from Knox dot models, we want to import something called auth token. Okay, and then finally, we want to import the serializers that we just created. So we want to bring in uh, whoops from I mean import. I get mixed up between the the um, like the react the the ES6 imports and Python imports. Uh, so let's say import user serializer as well as the register serializer. Okay, so that should be all we need to bring in. Now let's create let's say register API. We'll also have a login API. And uh, I guess a get user API just to get the user. So for the registration, let's create a class. We'll call it register. Uh, we'll call it registration API. I guess we'll just call it register API. And let's pass in generics. And then this generics object has something called a generic API view. So that's what we're going to use. And it's kind of it's kind of an abstraction. So we don't have to do you don't have to manually write every piece of functionality. It takes care of a lot of stuff for us. Uh, so we need to include the seri uh, serializer class, which is going to be the register serializer that we just created and brought in. Um, then we're going to define a method of post. Okay, so this is going to take in self. It's going to take in the request. So when we make a request to register, all the data we send, the email, password, that's all going to be in here along with the headers and er everything that we send. And then we just want to do asterisk args and double asterisk KW args or quargs, um, which just it just basically means like It can take more arguments. It's kind of hard to explain. It's something that has that confused me for a long time. Uh, it's part of Python. So in here, let's say serializer. I have a problem typing serializer for some reason. Uh, and then we're going to set this to self dot get underscore serializer. And then this takes in data, which is going to equal the request. dot data. Okay, so anything that comes in, any data that comes in here is going to get passed into this this serializer. And then we want to make sure it's valid so we can call serializer dot is valid. And we're just going to pass an option in of raise underscore exception and set that to true so that we send any send back any errors that are needed. Um, and then we need to save the user in the database. So we're going to say user equals serializer dot save. And then finally, we want to send our response back. All right. Now, this response, we're going to say return response, which we brought in up above from rest framework. And inside here, we're going to have an object. I should say a dictionary This is Python. And we're going to send the user and the token. Okay, so for the user, we'll set it to the user serializer, pass in the user object here, and then a context, which is going to be equal to self dot get underscore serializer context. Okay, and this is actually a method. And then we're just going to tack on to the end of this dot data. That should give us the, the serialized user. And we're going to send that as a response. I'm going to put a comma here and we also want to send the token. Okay, so just like if you log in, once you register, you're, you'll also get a token so you can log in immediately. Okay, if, you, if that's how you want it to work. Um, so this we're going to use auth token from from uh, Knox, which we brought in up above here. And we just want to do objects dot objects dot create. 
and then pass in user. So what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to create a token that's specific to that user so that when you make a request from your front end, whatever, whether it's Postman or React or Vue or anything else, um, it's going to know what you who you are from that token. Okay, and that token goes in the header. It goes in the authorization he, uh, part of the header. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. I know it's it's a little difficult. So let's save this. And obviously we need a way to interact with this. So we need to create an endpoint. So inside accounts, I'm going to create another URLs dot pi file. And any URLs that have to do with authentication will go in here. So let's say from Django dot URLs, we're going to import path. and include and then we also want to bring in from our API that we just created we want to import the register API and from Knox uh, we'll say from Knox we want to import views as Knox underscore views All right, and then we want to set our URL patterns just like we would in any URLs.py file. And we're going to set this first path of API slash auth. And we want to set that to include the Knox URLs. Knox.urls. Okay. And then let's put a comma here. And we're going to create the register path. which is going to be that same API slash auth, except it's going to be slash register. And then we're going to set that to our register API. In this register API, we just have to tack on as underscore view. Okay, because it's a generic API view. Now let's save this and we have to now include this file in the main URLs file. So let's go to lead manager. URLs dot pi and we'll put a comma here and bring this down and let's just change this to accounts dot URLs. All right. And then I'm just going to reset the server just to make sure everything's okay here. And now we're going to try to register a user with Postman. Okay, so I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to make a post request to HTTP. Let's do local host port. 8000 slash API slash auth slash register. And we need to send along in the header. We need to send along the content type. And that's going to be application slash JSON. And then in the body, we'll choose raw and we'll send along our data. okay the user we want to we want to register. So username. And we'll set that to. Uh, let's just do, I don't know, we'll just do John and email. Say J Doe and password and it'll hash the password automatically. That's included with Django. So password, I'll just do one through six. All right, so let's try this out. We might get an error. Let's click send. Okay, so we're getting a 500 error. Let's check the console here. Type object is not iterable. All right, guys, so I paused the video because I, I couldn't find the, the answer for the life of me. Everything is fine. What, en what it ended up being, I think, I haven't tested it yet, is in the settings file. So if we go to settings.py, where we put this, uh, this REST framework default authentication classes, this is a tuple and With a tuple, if you only have one value, you need to add a trailing comma. Okay, if you don't do that, it's going to look at it as a string. So hopefully that's it. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so now we're going to we'll just restart the server here for good luck. And let's go back to Postman and let's try this again. So same request to post request to register with this data and let's send and it works. Awesome. So you can see that it gives us back the user and it gives us this token. Okay, and this token is going to identify this user. 
but we're sending the user data back, you know, if you want to use it somewhere in your application, if you want to say welcome John or something like that. Okay, so this response is coming from our API right here. Okay, if you want to send other stuff along, you could do that as well. But now at least we know that we can register with our back end. So the next thing to do is move on to log in. Okay, we want to be able to, to, to log in as well, which will give us basically the same response. So let's go back to serializers and let's go down to our login serializer. And we're going to give this a class name of login serializer. Pass in serializers dot serializer. And, and notice I didn't do model serializer because we're not actually we're not dealing with creating a model or anything like that. We're simply validating that um, a user is authenticated. okay, or that a, a, a user name and password passes. So let's say let's create a variable called username. We're going to set it to serializers dot char field. And password we're going to set to serializers dot char field. And let's say define validate. We're going to pass in self and we're going to pass in data. Okay, and then we're going to set user to authenticate. Okay, remember we brought authenticate in up here from Django um, and then authenticate. We're just going to pass in this double asterisk and then the data. All right. And then we just want to check to see if the user has um, is active. So we're going to say uh, if user and user dot is underscore active, okay, which is a property of user. And this stuff is all included with Django by default. That's why this this code might not look, I guess, complete because it's already there. It's already included in Django. We're not we're not straight up saying, you know, if the password equals this or this, it's 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 more abstract than it would be with like, let's say, Node and Express with, um, you know, Passport or whatever. So if this is true, then we want to just return the user. Um, and then if not, we want to we want to raise we want to send back an error. So we're going to say raise serializers dot validation error and we're just going to pass in the error of incorrect credentials. Okay. And this stuff is all in the doc documentation, so you might want to check out the Django auth document documentation as well as the rest framework documentation and e even the Knox docs, the Knox docs. So let's save that. And now that we have our login serializer, we need to create our login API. So let's go to API.py. And in here, we're going to go down to here and create a class of login API. And this is going to take in generics. And if this is a generic API view, just like the register, we need to create a serializer class. Actually, you know what? I'll just copy this whole thing. So we'll just paste that in. And let's see, we have serializer class is going to be login serializer, which we didn't bring in. Let's go up here and just bring that in. Uh, and then let's see, we're going to get serializer, get data, pass the data in. Check if it's valid. Um, we're not going to save a user. That's that's obviously the register job. We're going to set this to serializer dot validated underscore data. All right. And then for the response, we're going to send the same thing that we did with the register, the user and the token. All right. So we'll save this. 
and now we have to add an endpoint for this. So we're going to go to our accounts URLs dot pi and let's bring in our login API. And then we're going to let's put a comma here and we'll just copy this down and we're going to say login API as view and then the URL is going to be auth slash login. Okay, so let's save that. So now I'm going to go I'm going to open a new tab and let's make a post request to uh, HTTP localhost port 8000 slash API slash auth slash login and let's set for the headers a content type of application JSON and for the body we want to send the username and password that we're logging in with so let's say username let's do one that's going to fail first So username, Brad, password. Okay, so if I send this and we get a 400 response, which is a bad request, which is correct. And then we get an error of incorrect credentials. Okay, so let's change this to the correct credentials, which is John and send. And we're still getting incorrect credentials. Hmm. API auth login login API as view. That's correct. Um, hmm. Okay, so this looks fine. And let's look at login. Uh, oh, I forgot parentheses right here. I think that should be it. All right, let's let's try that. So let's go back and let's try something that's wrong again. Okay, incorrect. John. There we go. So now it's working. So as you can see, when we log in, it gives us the same response that the registration gives us. So in your application, you can make it so that when they register, they can immediately log in. Uh, you know, or, or get sent to a route that is protected that needs a token. All right. So let's see. We have our registration, our login. Um, the next thing that I want to do is just create a, like a get user API so that we can just simply get the, the user with the token. So we have to actually add the token. It'll be a protected route. So let's go to. Let's go to our API and go down here and create a class of user API and say generics. And this is going to be a retrieve API view. And we need to set permission classes. Okay, so we, we want this route to be protected, meaning we, it needs to have a valid token. You need to be logged in to be able to to uh, access this. Um, so let's say permissions. And we want to do dot is authenticated. And we want to put a trailing comma here um, and then let's bring in our serializer class, which will be the user serializer. All right. And then we just want to define a method called get underscore object because we want to return the user. So we're going to say get object self and then we want to return from this self dot request dot user. So what this will do is it's going to look at the token that we send along. And it's going to send back whatever the user is, okay? whatever whatever user is associated with that token. So let's save this and let's add an endpoint for it. So we'll go to our accounts URLs dot pi and let's bring in our user API. 
and then I'll just copy this down to change this to user API as view and it's going to be auth slash user. All right, so let's save that now. We are we logged in here. We have a, a valid token, but let's go ahead and open up a new tab. And this is actually going to be a get request so we can leave it. And let's go HTTP. Localhost 8000 slash API slash auth slash user. So let's just try that. So we get authentication credentials were not provided. So what we need to do is provide a valid token of a user, which we just logged in here and get, gave us a token back. So we're going to grab this and we're going to provide a headers value of authorization. And then for the value, we just want to put in the word token and then a space and then paste in that token and let's send and it gives us the user. Okay, if I change this token at all, like let's just add a one on the end and send it. It's an invalid token. Okay, and it knows that this is John from this token. It's all it, it it's it can look it up in the database and tell that this is John. Okay, if we register another user, actually, we'll just do that, I guess. So let's register another user of, let's say, Jeff. and send. Okay, so now we get a different a, to a different token. We're going to grab that, go to this tab and change the token. Okay, same endpoint, we're just changing the token and we'll send and it gives us Jeff. Okay? And we're we're going to be protecting all of our routes including the leads, you know, to add a lead, to delete a lead, you're going to have to send this token along um to be able to do that. Okay, so The last thing that I want to do here on the server side and in this video is create a logout. So for logout, there's actually a, a view that we can bring in to our URLs. So right here, uh, let's see, we're going to add another path. And that path is going to be API slash auth. slash logout. All right, and then we're going to take that Knox views that we brought in above and we're going to say dot logout view. You can log out all users, but we just want logout view and do dot as underscore view. And then we're just going to give this a name as well. So let's put a comma here and just say name equals Knox. log out and we'll save that. So what this is going to do is it's going to invalidate the token. So they'll have to log in again and and get a new token. And it's I think it's important to do it on the back end. You might see sometimes people will just clear it out of local storage on the front end, but it's not truly logging out because that token is still it's still available. Um what this will do is is destroy that token. So if I Let's uh let's actually open another tab and let's say uh what do I want to do here? Actually, we'll just use this tab, but we'll change this to auth log out and we'll keep the authorization here. Let's send uh oh, I'm sorry, this should be a post request. Okay, so it doesn't give us anything back, but let's try again with the same token to do auth slash user. And we'll send and now it's invalid. Okay, so when we logged out, we invalidated that token, so the user has to again log in, get a new token, and then use that to access protected routes. All right, so this is probably the most difficult part of this whole series. um especially if you're not that familiar with python uh just because every the with django things are so abstract that it can be a little difficult to wrap your head around at least for me i'm just speaking for myself i don't know if if you guys feel that way maybe this is very self explanatory to you but i find it a little difficult just because it's it's very abstract um but yeah so that's going to be it in the next video 
what I want to do is start to implement uh, authentication on the front end. So we're going to create a, a login form, a registration form, and we want to interact with these endpoints from React and Redux so that we can actually in, you know, integrate this into our app and, um, and have full authentication. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.